man, Big Lou. Big Lou Barbecue. Now, things I want to do, and this is what I got going on for you. I'm going to cook the better part of a Thanksgiving dinner on my barrel house cooker today. I love the barrel house cooker. You can cook just about anything on it. That's why it's called a cooker, not a smoker, because you can cook just about anything on it. Well, maybe not ice cream or a frozen daiquiri or something, but you can cook just about anything on it. So I'm going to be cooking a turkey and three sides. Here's why. I love Thanksgiving. I love this time of year. Maybe it's because my birthday falls Thanksgiving week every year, but I love Thanksgiving. In fact, I started my YouTube channel on Thanksgiving Day two years ago in 2016. And that's because earlier that week, I'd cooked a turkey outside on my barbecue pit. And people said, hey, you ought to start a YouTube channel. My in-laws talked me into it. So I'm cooking a turkey, Thanksgiving stuff, because I love Thanksgiving. But also another reason. This is going to be the first Thanksgiving. I'll be turning 48, but it'll be the first Thanksgiving that I have not had a grandparent to share it with. My last grandparent, my dad's mom, died last year the day after Thanksgiving. And the day before my birthday. Now she loved Thanksgiving. And when I was young, we'd celebrate Thanksgiving on my dad's side of the family at her house. Later, as I became a teenager, Thanksgiving kind of shifted to my aunt's house. But my grandmother always brought her spinach madeleine and her sweet potato casserole. Now her name was Louise and we always loved Louise's sweet potato casserole and spinach madeleine. I've got her spinach madeleine recipe, and I'm gonna make it today. I don't have her sweet potato casserole recipe, but I'm gonna make one up in her honor anyway. Now the first grandparent I lost, I was 25, and I guess I was fortunate to be 25 years old to have all four of my grandparents still alive, but my mom's dad died when I was 25. He loved to cook, and all I can remember is him loving to cook. Because see, he retired in the early 70s, and I was born in 1970, so I don't remember him working. I understand that he took up cooking and barbecuing as a hobby after he retired. And he had one of those old bullet smokers and would go to Thanksgiving in his house and he'd uh, have a smoked turkey that he had smoked on that. And he would always make oyster dressing too. Whoo, I love oyster dressing. And he made it good too. With French bread, that's what we're gonna be doing today. I think this recipe is his recipe. I don't know, but I know it's out of one of his favorite cookbooks because I've got his favorite cookbook or one of his favorite cookbooks in my kitchen now, all right? So what I'm doing today is I'm cooking a smoked turkey with his rub recipe. I'll have a I card above, link below for the rub recipe, and I'm gonna cook, make oyster dressing. I've never made oyster dressing before. This is the first time I've ever tried it. My kids don't remember eating oyster dressing. I'm sure my son has never had it, and my daughter may have had it when my wife's grandfather used to make it, but then he got sick and too sick to make it, and then he's passed away too. So I'm gonna make oyster dressing. I don't think my kids ever remember having it, and I'm doing it in honor of my mom's dad. And I'm making spinach madeleine and sweet potato casserole in honor of my dad's mom. So to my grandmother Louise and my grandfather Gordon, I'm dedicating this video. Big Lou Barbecue. All right, I'm gonna cook the spinach madeleine right on the barrel house with the oak grate in the center, the uh, charcoal basket there with half a chimney of charcoal in it, put the grill grate on top, put it in my favorite Volrath ware pot. That's the pot I need to smoke this spinach in. Now I've got about half a cup of water down there and I'm gonna try to put in four bags of frozen spinach. But once I get the third bag in, then I realize, hey, they're not all gonna fit. So the fella in Jaws is right. I think we're gonna need a bigger pot. Actually, he said boat, but anyway, I get the uh, three bags dumped out of the Volrath ware pot into the bigger pot, and then I can put that fourth bag in. I opened it up with my handy-dandy bag opener. Hey, my pocket knife is clean, y'all. We're going to cook that down. Now, once it's cooked down, it probably would have fit in a Volrath ware pot, but I got to get it out of this pot, and I got to get it drained, but I got to reserve a cup of that pot liquor because we're going to need that. So once the pot is drained, I put in a uh, stick of butter and half an onion all chopped up. We're gonna get those uh, onions translucent. Now I'm gonna put in a half cup of flour and we're gonna make ourselves a blonde roux right here. Not too thick, not too thin, and not too dark. Now I'm gonna add in about two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce, one to two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce, and now I'm gonna put in a cup of evaporated milk, all right? And now here's the seasoning. It's a teaspoon and a half of black pepper, garlic powder, and celery salt, and salt and cayenne pepper to taste. You can see I like some cayenne pepper. Now here comes that cup of that uh, spinach pot liquor from the cooking of the spinach. And here goes in what's supposed to be jalapeno cheese, but they were out of the Velveeta jalapeno, so I substituted in the Velveeta Mexican. That substitution works. It is different. I'm not going to say it's not as good, but it is different. 
I do recommend using the jalapeno cheese, but if you can't find it, the Mexican works. We get the cheese all melted down into the sauce and we dump our drained spinach back into it and we want to get it mixed up. Hey, that's my grandmother Louisa's colander right there. That's the colander she would have used to drain her spinach when she made the spinach madeleine for those Thanksgivings all those years ago. We get this all mixed up and incorporated in, and at that point, you could eat this, all right? However, as my grandmother would have said, it needs to set up, and she would have dumped it into a corningware casserole dish, set it in her refrigerator overnight, and baked it the next morning on Thanksgiving morning. What we're going to do is put this in our ice box. It's about 9 a.m. in the morning at this point, and we're going to put it in our barrel house about 6 p.m. in the evening. We're going to let all those flavors meld together right there in the ice box. So I'll put a lid on it, bring it inside, and put it inside my refrigerator, and we're going to put it back on the barrel house smoker later that evening around 6 o'clock. Y'all, that's how you make spinach madeleine. All right, time to talk turkey. Get that silly plastic thermometer out of it. Pull out the giblets and the neck. We're going to make a stock with that. And I'm going to use my grandpa's poultry rub. Recipes down below. And a Creole butter marinade. Now, the Creole butter marinades are easy to make, but I was making so many things, I just used a store-bought one. Cut that big old skin off the neck. Cut that tailbone off. We're going to use that tailbone in that turkey stock as well. There was a big old glob of fat by the abdomen on this one, so I cut it off of that too. Now, I want to inspect the turkey. Make sure there's no places where any feathers are left after the... Uh, plucking process and uh, we're going to start injecting it now so we fill up the syringe and we go uh, three or four times into each breast you go up down sideways and maybe even crossways however you want to do it but just get the uh, injection all in there and then we get it into the thigh as well I'm a big fan of injecting the uh, birds instead of brining because it's so much faster so much easier and you get so much benefit out of injecting it without the cost and the resources of brining it, all right? It's, it works really, really well. Now, you can brine if you want to, all right? But I think injecting is just so much easier, and you still get great benefit and flavor from injecting the uh, turkey. All right, so I get that uh, last little bit in there, and we've got to do this thigh right there on that side. Got a few more drops of it, and we're going to just pour it right down the cavity. Now it's time to put on this uh, poultry rub. And I, like I said, I grew up eating turkeys flavored like this. This is my grandmother, grandfather's recipe, excuse me. And my mother has, still has his handwritten copy of this recipe. I don't know where he got it from, if it came from a cookbook or if he just made it up or whatever. But I grew up eating turkeys like this when he would uh, smoke them on his uh, bullet smoker that he had back in the late 70s and early 80s. And... Um, I'll tell you what, it's just what turkeys are supposed to taste like to me, all right? We want to do it liberally, get it all on there, and then we're going to put it on the Easy Load uh, Turkey Hanger Kit from Barrel Houses. Man, this thing makes the turkey uh, hanging process really easy. Once the, it's on the turkey hanging kit, we're going to go ahead and truss it. I'm a big fan of trussing turkeys. That's where we tie it up so that the legs are together and the uh, wings are together up near the body, and it all cooks kind of evenly. I'm no expert in trussing uh, chickens, but... Once I get the legs tied up, I go back around the wings underneath neath them like that. And then I go through and under the turkey like this. And then up around the top, holding the wings to the main uh, part of the bird. And tie it down tight like that the best I can. And we're going to cut off the excess slack. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's hanging because we're about to go out and put this on the barrel house cooker. So let's get our grill thrill on. Right now, there we go. Kind of cut off that extra slack. Cut off that slack, Big Lou. There we go. And that's what it's going to hang like. All right, let's go out and light up the uh, cooker the standard way. Uh, put about one-third of the chimney of coals on top of the uh, basket there. I'm using the extension ring. I've got the bottom grate in there. And here's some four big old sweet potatoes that will not fit on the O-grate by themselves. So we're hanging them right on the edge of the O-grate just like that. I've got a hook through the root end of each one. And we're going to hang them right there on the O-grate as we cook the turkey. Now the turkey's going to take about five hours and these sweet potatoes are only going to take about three. Let's drop the turkey in and I'll put a temperature probe down in, into the thigh and when that thigh is 180 this turkey's going to be just about done all right and so we're going to uh it's going to take about five hours for the turkey but after three hours the potatoes look like this look at that they're starting to pull right through the hook so I know they're soft I know they're ready to get done that's what the potatoes look like we get them all off of there and inside now it's time to do the oyster dressing hey that's a loaf of french bread I had it for about two days but it wasn't stale enough, so I put it in the oven at about 200 degrees for about two hours. 
to get it all crispy like that. I left the uh, sound on here, even though the video sped up. You can hear how crispy that uh, bread was, all right? Now, after I did the turkey, I took the giblets, the heart, the uh, gizzard, the liver, and the neck, and I boiled it all into a stock with some onion and celery and everything for about two or three hours. I pull all the meat off the neck, chop up the giblets. Now, in a cast iron pot, I'm going to... Uh, saute an onion, two ribs of celery, and a orange bell pepper in half a stick of butter right there, okay? What we're doing right now is making this oyster dressing. We're going to get that all sauteed down. By the way, I used an orange bell pepper because this is a fall Thanksgiving oyster dressing. If it's Christmas, I'd have used a red bell pepper. What I'm doing now is browning up all that giblet meat and uh, turkey neck meat, browning it up, and now we're going to pour in that stock. I probably had about a quart and a cup of stock that I had made with the uh, turkey necks and giblets. Now, if you don't want to use giblets, if that makes you queasy, you can use sausage, but then don't ask anybody to tell you how they make sausage. What I'm doing now is putting all that bread in and we're stirring all that bread in there. By the way, I did keep about maybe half a cup of breadcrumbs for the spinach madeleine. I'll show you what to do with that later. But we got to stir all this uh, bread up into this uh, stock there and we get it the consistency of pudding and now we're going to season it with a, a cajun creole seasoning that's the stuff i make you can use the kind you like but we're going to season it now everything's in that cajun creole seasoning we need except maybe some oregano or majorum i'll put some majorum in there and then some parsley and we're going to stir all this around and get it all mixed in there well and now we're going to add in some green onion tops all right now this is on low medium heat right now and now we're going to put in the oysters I don't even cut the oysters up. The recipe said do it whole. I did inspect that pint of oysters. That's one pint of oysters. I did inspect them to make sure there's no shells in there. All right. We're going to stir that in and still cook it on low, medium heat until they start to curl up just like that. And y'all, this is ready to go on the smoker. I to, except I got to put in two beaten eggs. Forgot to tell you about that. Got to put in two beaten eggs right after we take it off the heat. All right. But put the eggs in after you take it off the heat. And then in about 30 minutes, we're going to put this on the smoker when that turkey is done. All right. Oh, wait. One more ingredient. I got to crystallize it. Almost forgot to crystallize it. Got to put that hot sauce in there, too. All right. Get that all mixed up. Now we're ready to go on the smoker. All right. The sweet potato casserole. Had those four big old sweet potatoes like that. And we're going to just spoon out the sweet potato uh, meat and put it into a bowl. To that bowl, I'm going to add some vanilla. Yeah, I like a lot of vanilla. Yeah, I'll give some more. I'll, I love vanilla, all right? We're going to add in a half stick of butter that I microwaved in my uh, Elvis cup there. And we're going to uh, add in a cup of brown sugar. Tried to mash it together, but then I said, hey, let's get the electric can mixer and get this all mixed up. Now I've got eight little ramekins, uh, cast iron ramekins that are enameled. And I'm going to spoon it into eight little ramekins like that. Just spoon them all around. And hey, once I get them all done, they're going to look like this right there. There's all eight of them with that sweet potato mixture in it. Now, into this cast iron skillet, I've got half a stick of butter going. And I'll put in some pecans. And we're going to start toasting the pecans right there in that butter. All right, just kind of saute the pecans around. Man, it was beginning to smell good. Now we're going to dump maybe, I don't know, what's that, half a cup of sugar on there? As much brown sugar as you want. Get that brown sugar to caramelize all around the uh, pecans. And now we're going to put the pecans on top of the sweet potatoes in each one of those little uh, ramekins that I have right there. So you get the sweet potato casserole is going to be kind of individual. All right, back to plan A. You remember that Volrathware pot? It's got a little thinner profile to it. I think it's only about five quarts, and I had to use a seven-quart Dutch oven this morning for that spinach matlin. So we're going to take that spinach matlin out and put it back in my Volrathware pot. It'll all fit now, even with the sauce, because all that frozen spinach, it's cooked down, and it's been sitting in the refrigerator for several hours since about 9 a.m. this morning. It's now about 6 p.m. in the evening. Now I'm putting on a uh, half cup of that breadcrumbs from the French bread and I microwaved up some uh, half stick of butter in my Elvis Presley Blue Hawaii cup. We're going to dump that on there and it's time to get it on the smoker once we get this turkey off of here. All right, the turkey's been going. Oh, it was between 235 and 250 all day long. The thigh is at 180 and it's been about five hours. Time to pull it off of here. Try to show you with a flashlight what it looks like because it has gotten dark on us, all right? Take the pit mitt and just grab the whole H frame. Pull it out on that easy load turkey hanger kit. Looks like that. I'm taking it inside and tinting it with aluminum foil. And it's going to sit in my 
oven in there just kind of staying warm i don't have the oven on as i put this turkey dressing down on that bottom grill grate by the way i did add a few more charcoal to the barrel house cooker hang the spinach madeleine in the volrath wear pot right through the middle of the o grate right there and then i've got these little uh cast iron ramekins they actually belong to my wife that the sweet potato casseroles in all eight of them fit around that o grate cover it back up should go for about an hour, but 45 minutes later, we check on it, and we've got to do something to the sweet potato casserole yet. I'm going to put about a dozen mini marshmallows on each one of them, and then close this back up and let them get all gooey for about 15 minutes, all right? So that's what it looks like with the marshmallows on there, with the light right there, and now let's close it up. 15 minutes later, those marshmallows are all gooey and melty. The spinach madeleine is done. The oyster dressing is done. Let's bring it inside and take a look and have a good taste test of this fine Thanksgiving meal. All done on that Barrel House Cooker 18. Hall Sun, how's that for a backyard barbecue holiday meal? The spinach madeleine, by the way, spinach madeleine is delicious as any barbecue side dish. You don't have to wait till the holidays to have it. That oyster dressing, mmm. Gosh, with the orange bell peppers in it because it's Thanksgiving time. If it's Christmas, I'd use red. That bird, that beautiful, beautiful bird. Ooh, about to uncut it from the trusses and slice it up right in front of you. And that's sweet potato casserole. And the eight little ramekins. All done on the barrel house. All right. Let's get into that thing. Oh, that cuts off easy. It just pulls apart. Mm. So juicy in there. Not cutting in the right place. There we go. Wing comes loose. Look, that wing just breaks off. Now let's cut this right here. You see that juice in there? That red is smoke ring. Look at that. That's where that um, marinade went in there. So, that's going to be some good turkey meat. Cutting this thigh, just falls apart. Mm. All right, I'm going to sneak a piece. Sneak a piece now. Y'all, that's a good turkey. That's a good turkey. Bro. All right, we're hungry. I only carved half the turkey. Looks like that right there. Y'all, it's gonna be good. All right, y'all, that's my plate. All right, I tried some of that dark meat instead of carving up that bird. That dark meat fall apart good, y'all. Mm. Now look, I grew up eating turkeys with pretty much the same recipe. My grandfather probably used to make his injectable marinade. I just buy that same stuff. And turkeys are my favorite thing to cook. I've cooked a lot of them. If I'm frying them, if I'm smoking them, I'm using the same recipe. I just haven't done it on the barrel house yet. I've already tasted the dark meat. Here's some of the white meat. You know what, let me get some of that breast meat. That's from the wing. Let's get some of that breast meat right there. All right, because that's the part that dries out for people. Big old bark. Oh, it's good. You good? Mm. To me, that's what turkey's supposed to taste like, y'all. It's just, that's just it. All right, spinach madeline. Y'all, this is a, uh, not only a good holiday dish, it's a good side dish for any bar thing you want to barbecue. Oh, that's good. That's good. Mm. And those flavors have melted. I tasted it earlier this morning before I put it in the refrigerator. Those flavors meld together. You really need to let it sit overnight or seven or eight hours, whatever have you. All right, now the oyster dressing. Eh, it's a little runnier than I think, but you know what? Mmm. You know, I had to make sure I got that oyster. I got more of that. That's good. Mm, golly. Let me get a spoon. I'm gonna do sweet potato casserole. All right, my daughter's just off camera. Hannah, how was that turkey? It's really good. Like I usually make, but even better. It's, it, it's, it's a good Thanksgiving it's good turkey. Thing. It's not even Thanksgiving yet. It's still October when I'm recording this. Ha <laughs> ha. How was that uh, spinach madeleine? It's good. I haven't had it because my mom made it. I was at camp. Oh, she's never had it. She didn't remember having it. She didn't remember my grandmother being able to make it. Wow. You had it when you were little. When grandmother was still able to cook, you, you, when your great-grandmother was still able to cook, you had it when you were little. But you couldn't remember it. All right, and um, how's the oyster dressing? That's good, too. She said earlier it was phenomenal. All right, I'm going to try this. 
Try this right here. Ooh, gooey pecans. Mmm. Got that smoke flavor and that vanilla flavor. You know the only thing I regret is not putting vanilla in when I candy the pecans. You can't have too much vanilla. Mmm, gosh, that's why I like the marshmallows. They taste like vanilla. More of this too. Hey, Barrel House doesn't pay me to do these things. I do them because I want to. They did send me the uh, Barrel House cooker for a review. I did a review and they sent me some accessories. I did a review of the accessories too. It's a great cooker by itself, but with that extension ring and that O grate, it makes it even a more fantastic cooker. Y'all was able to do the turkey the, and bake the oyster dressing, bake the spinach madeleine. I cooked the spinach madeleine on it as well. All right. And um, cooked the sweet potatoes and then mixed up the sweet potato casserole and then put it back on there to bake that. The only thing I didn't cook on it was cooking of the oyster dressing, but we did bake it on there when it was time to bake. All right. Anyway, I could have done it just the way, same way I did the uh, spinach madeleine, but the turkey was in it at the time. Anyway, Barrel House doesn't pay me to say these things. I just like to use them, all right? It's a good cooker, and I got a Thanksgiving meal to eat. Hey, thanks for watching Big Lou Barbecue. As I like to say, I like to say it in Spanish, gracias por mirar.